Dear friends and fellow patriots, colleagues and comrades, I've done this short film <clears throat> out of my respect for you and the support you've given me personally over the years. Today I announce my retirement from all political activities forthwith and my withdrawal from Britain First with immediate effect. With 40 years of campaigning under my belt, nine children and grandchildren, and another baby arriving at uh, on average of one every year, I believe it's time to step back. And recent political and personal events, and sadly family health issues, have confirmed my decision to be the correct one. I hope people appreciate that I still have se very many actually serious charges to face over my defence of our sacred flag during the Belfast protests. As a result, I am under constant police surveillance, as is my family. My bail conditions have made it almost impossible to function, as at every turn I am under very restrictive and intrusive police surveillance. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Even when I took my little boy out recently for an ice cream at a World War I memorial event, which I had, I had to go to the High Court to even be allowed to go in the first place, um, I took my wee boy for a uh, ice cream and had two police officers with machine guns and video cameras follow me, even to the ice cream van itself. Completely and absolutely ridiculous, but welcome to my world. You know, nobody should be forced to live like this or have their seven-year-old son stare up the muzzle of a heckler cop machine gun. But for two years, this has been what I and my kids have had to endure. Sadly, in Ulster, some people have had even worse treatment, more severe than I've had to endure, so I really should count myself fortunate. I love Ulster and her flag with every fibre of my being, and if that means going to prison, so be it. Hundreds of better men and women than me have already made that sacrifice and are languishing right now in the jails of Northern Ireland. If I have to join their ranks in such a cause, it will be my great honour and privilege. And God willing, I will be there with people who have put their money where their mouth is and stood fast. And I can assure you from this quarter, there will be absolutely no surrender. Over the last few years, you have probably seen me become more and more involved in <clears throat> Britain First. Now, contrary to ridiculous media reports, I'm not the evil genius behind every right-wing group in the country. There are thousands of good, solid, patriotic, talented people in every organisation. Sadly, there's a few idiots and oddballs, but, you know, you get that in every walk of life. In reality, it is the hard work and dedication of normal family people. Patriots, not Nazis or racist crackpots or lunatics, just concerned people who are deeply worried about the future of this country and the future of their children. You know, back when Britain first uh, started, I was very excited at last to see a, a Nazi-free, non-racist, sensible patriotic group emerge from the chaos of Britain's right-wing political wilderness and from the godless neo-Nazi racist cranks of the traditional so-called right-wing. Thankfully, the rise of Britain First has sounded the death knell for the likes of the BNP, the EDL and people like that. They're finished. They're gone. They'll never be back. And that can only be a good thing for people of faith and people who are real patriots who want to make a real difference in this country. The great difference was going to be that Britain First would be for the first time ever an organisation that would tackled the root cause of our nation's demise. And these were, in my opinion, the demographic time bomb, brought about solely by our own fault, by our reluctance to produce children, which in turn has left the indigenous British an ageing and dying country. This has led to the destruction of the family unit. And what is a nation other than a collection of families cooperating? The power is in the family. No family, no nation. It's as simple as that. We British have aborted, terminated, call it what you will, 8 million of our own people who now would have had children 
of, the, of themselves. So we've eradicated approximately 14 million fellow Brits, indigenous citizens. So now we know why we're in such a deep hole. What utter madness has taken over us as a nation where we've killed 14 million of our own people? It's complete insanity. There would be no room, had we not done this in the UK, to bring foreign workers and migrants in, had we protected our most precious national asset, and that is our precious children. But we didn't. We killed them. So it's our fault. Nobody else's. You can be pro-choice, pro-life, call it what you want, it's your business, I'm not on that soapbox today. But these are the facts, that's all I'm trying to do is give you the facts. We have brought this catastrophe on our own heads, and who's to blame other than ourselves? Is it any wonder we are now facing such a catastrophe in our nation's history? All of these destructive issues are merely symptoms of the underlying disease, and that disease is the liberal secularization of this nation, which we have suffered through the rise of atheist socialism these last 50 years, otherwise known as cultural Marxism. This poisonous creed has completely permeated and destroyed the very fabric of our once solid nation and left us weak, decadent and self-obsessed. I have seen so many good people getting involved in patriotic politics and that encourages me. I've seen some really good people getting involved with Britain First. But like all organisations, Britain First is not perfect. And to be honest, I am not at all pleased with the path Britain First has been going down recently regarding what I consider an unbalanced focus on Islam and the so-called mosque invasions. I truly believe that while it is necessary to confront those individuals who would do us harm, and I've never shrank from that, there can be little justification or sense in confronting elderly imams, worshippers, or gratuitously disrespecting people's places of worship. I do not like it one bit, and it is completely unnecessary. I am no lover of Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, <clears throat> or any other ism or faith other than my own. However, as a Christian, it is vital that we behave in a way that does not bring reproach on the name of Christ or on us as his followers. Simple manners and politeness is the very least that we should display when dealing with other people, especially of other faiths. Importantly, we must remember that the primary goal in dealing with any community that we perceive as a threat is to prevent that situation becoming any worse. To neutralise that, that is the goal, or should be our goal. Now, we all know that there's a section of Islam that is indeed problematic, but the reality is these people are a minority and they're often despised by the majority of their own uh, population. The majority of the British Muslim community is decent, peaceful, taxpaying, we don't get any grief. So by going in to those people's mosques and places of worship and stirring them up, only serves to enrage the normal Islamic community and drives especially the young people from that community into the hands of the extremists, into the hands of the radicals and to the more extreme sects. <clears throat> and that, my friend, is not only counterproductive, but it is politically insane and will only serve as a recruiting sergeant, a very effective one, for the radicals. You know, God knows there are more than enough excuses for young British Muslims to become radicalised these days. We have Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and now we have the whole hideous situation in Palestine. And I've got to say, the whole Palestinian uh, situation horrifies me. It really, really horrifies me. To add to this situation by our ill-thought-out uh, Ill actions, is a disservice to our own people here in Britain and will attract the wrong type of people to the ranks of Britain first. It will attract the crackpots, the loons, the racists, the cra crazy people. The very people we've worked so hard to keep away from the organisation. It troubles me greatly these days as well that 
So many British patriots support the murderous campaign being waged by the Israelis against Palestinians. You know, if you're right wing, especially in Northern Ireland, and especially if you're an evangelical Christian in anywhere in Europe or America, you must support Israel. Why? Why? Why have you got to support Israel? You know, nightly I see bombs dropping on civilians' heads, women and kids being murdered wholesale. I can't support that, and I won't support that. I don't believe this baloney that the Palestinians are using babies as human shields. Absolute baloney. I cannot and will not endorse this onslaught by Israel against the civilian population. If you have to kill 200 civilians to take out a terrorist, you're doing it wrong. Stop it. Think of something else. And the international community should condemn this. You know, I will be severely attacked for saying this. Might even get beat up in some parts. Won't be the first time. But I cannot and will not write moral blank checks anymore for Israel. We are all God's children. And the butchering of a thousand Arab women and children is something, as a Christian, I must condemn in the strongest possible ways. Hamas needs to stop firing rockets in Israel, and Israel has to respond proportionately, not launch a genocidal attack on a mainly defenseless civilian population. It is not on, and I don't care for Muslims, I don't care for green with pink spots, it's not on. <clears throat> As an Ulster Unionist, I've lived through religious conflict. I've been injured, shot, blown up on several occasions, and I've buried many, many friends and relations. I understand the mindset of a religious person, because I'm one myself. And I can tell you this, if a group of uh, people here of the opposite camp come charging into my church and disrespected the sanctity of the building or the dignity of our ministers and elders, I, for one, would be so outraged, I would not be willing to engage the people who did that. So it shuts down avenues which we need to keep open. It's not effective, it's not helpful, and I would appeal to the lads to stop it and think of something that will perhaps engage the wider community. Con confronting hate preachers on the streets is one thing. Entering people's places is quite another. I have spoken to Britain First leaders about this on several occasions and was assured this would cease and would not happen again. Sadly, it has. And I must condemn it outright, without reservation, because I don't like it and I don't agree with it. And I do not think it is necessary. And perhaps we should consider confronting the biggest hate preachers, the biggest terrorists of all, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. These people have done more damage to our country. These people have sent more of our young lads to their death than any hate preacher. So let's confront these guys as well if we're going to confront anybody. We have to face reality in this country. Given the demographic facts, I can assure you that if we keep going down the path we're going right now, Islam will indeed dominate Britain and in less than one generation. It's inevitable. So instead of howling at the moon like the BNP, National Front, EDL and all the other groups have done for years. It's time to focus in on ourselves. And it's time to set our own house in order before we try and sort anybody else's house out. Patriots in this country need to rediscover the old-fashioned ideals of family, manhood, womanhood, the work ethic, morality, and the most important thing of all, the blessing of having children. Nurturing them in a strong faith or even a faith-based moral environment. I do hope you agree with me on this, and all many more, but it's time we took care of our own business before we start poking our nose into other people's. However, if we continue down this current kind of road of rejecting the old ways, which are so unpopular these days, we will be swept aside. We will be replaced and dominated by the strong and cohesive and rapidly growing force of Islam. There's no doubt about it. So it is. All I can do in my personal world is to build my family and I would advise nationalists to do likewise. And if we all do this, we might, just might, retain our own nation. If not, we continue doing what we're doing. It's over. It's finished. This nation is finished. And in a very short time. You know, I speak to 
people in the Muslim faith every single day in the office, and many are in broad agreement with Britain First social policies. You know, traditional marriage, uh, sanctity of life, uh, you know, the old-fashioned things that, that Britain First has in its manifesto. Many Muslims are very in a, uh, broadly in agreement with that. But certain things that has been done recently alienate these people and drive them into the hands of the radicals. And that's politically unwise long term. You know, in all my time with dealing with people of all hues and cries and creeds, and many of them very irate, I have never been deliberately rude or insulting to anybody. It's not the way you do things. You know, people scream down the phone at me, that's fine. I will argue my point, no holds barred, and I will argue very strongly to promote my point. But when you represent the Christian faith to people who are from a different, especially those from a different religion, or no religion, there's many people in support of Britain first, no religion, you have to go that extra mile to really set out your stall. That's, that's what I'm saying in that. You know, this is fundamental, not only being a Christian, but to being British. We are not a nation of rude people. We're renowned for being the very opposite. Yes, you can be tough without being rude or ill-mannered or, or bullish. We're British. We're better than that. I fear no man, but I am responsible for myself and my actions before God. Therefore, I refuse to support any action that is or could be perceived as gratuitous or oppressive. No matter who the foe is, it doesn't matter who they are. There's set ways of doing things. As many of you know, I've been at the coalface of campaigning for many years. I've, I first entered the mad world of patriotic politics as a nine-year-old collecting humanitarian aid for Ulster Unionists fleeing the very intense civil war at the time in Belfast, which is back in the early 1970s. From then I've spent almost 40 years on a soapbox of one sort of another. I've been privileged to serve the church that I love so well, and I have had the great honour of standing up for the rights of children, both born and unborn. With my family's help, we have financed and built with our own hands Women's shelters in Romania and Hungary, and have for many years been at the forefront of tackling explicit sex education aimed at our children, as well as defending the sanctity of marriage and the traditional fam the, the traditional position of the family in our society, which is sadly gone these days. I make no apology for opposing the attacks on the family made by successive governments. Indeed, I count this probably as my best endeavours. I am an old-fashioned conservative Christian, make no bones about it, but I am not a neocon and I am not an evangelical Zionist. And the combined secular attacks on our people via sex education, the breakup of the family, abortion, same-sex marriage, the wholesale rejection of historical Christian-based social structures has sadly destroyed this nation. You know, people want a strong nation. To have a strong nation, you must have a, a strong platform to build it on. That platform is always our Christian heritage. They don't want that. The nation falls apart and people moan. Look, if every single Muslim left the UK tomorrow, this country would still be utterly doomed as a nation. You know, when things go wrong, we all run about looking to blame somebody. But this is the reality. Our plummeting birth rate has ensured our demise. Our whole wholesale rejection of any faith-based morality has left our families broken, dysfunctional and corrupt. Many of our children are almost feral. Just look at Jeremy Kyle. It's unbelievable the millions of people that run about this country. Our people are now swimming in a polluted pool of consumerism, hedonistic pleasure-seeking, immorality, drunkenness and self-obsession. And that's nobody's fault but ours. We see the country go down this path in front of us, yet we continue on the same self-destructive path, rejecting the cure. As Enoch Powell once said, we must be mad. Obviously, my decision to leave Britain first will cause a great deal of upheaval in the short term. So I'll ask people to be patient and to understand. And I also hope that people understand and respect my decision to go. Let me finish by saying that I wish all those good and decent people out there from having the great honour 
to work with down through these many years, various different organisations. God's blessing for the future, and thank you for being my, my friend. I will finish by offering this advice to the people and to Britain first. It is time for us, the British, to set our own house in order before we try to fix others. You know, people call me all the time complaining that a local church is now a mosque or a temple or some other place of worship. But they never ever attended that church. When I asked them, did you go there? No, never. Did you ever stick some money in the plate? No, never. What do you want me to do about it then? It's your local church. You never supported it. Other people of faith have came along and took it over. That is how nature operates. Other people call up and complain about their kids being brainwashed by the PC brigade or being the only kids to speak English in their school. Of course, these things are a disgrace and very worrying for parents. But folks, I've got to be brutal here. They are your kids. They're your responsibilities. They're not the state's. They're your responsibility. They're your most precious asset in this world, so do something about it. You know, my wife and I were so fed up with the same thing, the, the brainwashing in the schools and all the rest of it, with the PC, multi-cult mob. We took our kids out of the school system and homeschooled them. And seriously, folk, it wasn't that hard, it wasn't that difficult, and it wasn't that expensive. Yes, it meant certain sacrifices regarding career and lifestyle and all the rest of it, but our kids are so important, we'd, we'd sacrifice our life for them. So missing out on a holiday now and again, or, or a part of your career, so what? You know, your kids are your kids. Take them back, get them out of the system, or you will lose them. The system, the state apparatus, brainwashing apparatus, is more time, more money, more expertise, and they spend more time with your kids than parents these days. So take personal responsibility or you will lose them. In my retirement, I actually want to help others to get involved in homeschooling. So I'll be available. If anybody wants to contact me regarding information on homeschooling or any practical advice, please contact me. I'll be only too pleased to help you. Not hard to get a hold of you, as most people know. You know, our people really need to find their way again. Our people need to be motivated by a love of their own history, achievements, faith and blood. This country needs a revolution, there's no doubt about it. And I am still convinced that there is no future whatsoever in politics. But let the revolution start within us as individuals, each and every one of us, with our families and with me and with you. When patriots start supporting marriage, Young, strong, vibrant, hard-working, self-reliant families, then we can stop worrying about the future because the future will take care of itself. We need a young, patriotic, godly population. That is the best. In fact, no, that is the only cure for the situation we now find ourselves in. If we continue with our current godless, amoral, hedonistic and decadent lifestyles and way about things, the great moral and social void <clears throat> will indeed be filled by a strong ideology. Nature abhors a vacuum, and right now the entire West is one great spiritual vacuum, ripe for a vibrant, socially cohesive ideology to fill it. By that, I mean Islam. And no amount of protesting against can prevent that. Only when our people are for an even more virulent, dynamic ideology can we prevent this. And I believe that is Christianity. <clears throat> a hard message, I know many will disagree with it, but I'm not here to flim flam. Probably one of my last, last addresses, so I'm going to tell you the truth. The writing is on the wall. <clears throat> Excuse me. My duty is, and always was, to tell you the truth, no matter what path you choose to take. It's your business, not mine. But as for me and my family, we choose to serve the faith of our fathers. And to reinforce the ethical glue that once acted as a cement that held our once great nation together. Opposing, even hating, others or other ideologies is indeed a strong motivator. But nothing on this earth is as powerful as a pure love one's own people, traditions, 
and faith. Nothing trumps that. So let others do their worst. We British shall continue to do our best. And if our people can take on board some of these messages, our nation once again may indeed be great. I hope all my, in all my years of campaigning I've got more things right than wrong. Ultimately God will be my judge in that, so let's hope. Finally friends, I wish you and yours every blessing for the future. And I earnestly pray that God is not yet finished with this once great nation. Thank you all. May God bless you. May God bless our United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland forever. All the very best folks and God save the Queen. <laughs>